Hello and welcome to Open SAP course DevOps for APAP with GCTS in SAP S4HANA. Week 4, tailor GCTS to your needs, Unit 1, Task-Based Committing. My name is Rinita Asani and I am a developer at SAP. Alright, before defining what is task-based committing and why it is important, let's make a comparison between development in APAP world versus development in Git world. So in APAP world, developers use transactions like SEAT or they might use ADT, which stands for APAP Development Tools in Eclipse, to change and create workbench objects or if they want to work with customizing objects, then they use SPRO and to release task and transport requests, they use SC09. Now imagine a use case. There are three developers working together in a common project. The project manager has created a transport request and inside the transport request, there are three tasks. Now each of the developer has been assigned to a task. Developers will work, change the code, and when finally they are done, they can release their task. And then the project manager can release the transport request. But remember this, only when all tasks have been released, then the transport request can be released. Now let's move to the Git world. In Git world, developers work in their own local system. For example, in this use case, there are three developers and each of them works on their uh, local branch. Branch 1, 2, 3. They add and commit their changes. Then they push the changes to the remote repository. To merge their branches to the main branch, they need to create a pull request. By creating a pull request, developers are asking for someone to review and approve their changes. If everything is okay, then their branches can be merged to the main branch, and thus a pull request is closed. Now, before defining task-based committing, let's answer this question. Why task-based committing? For this, let me tell you a story. Meet Sandy. Sandy is a developer. She has been assigned a task together with her colleagues, Saki, Freda, and Matthias, in a common transport request. Now, Saki, this time, she finished her task earlier because the next day she is taking a vacation. But currently in GCTS world, to commit her changes, she needs to wait for other colleagues to release their task as well because transport request is equal to a commit. Now, this is not that ideal because it causes interdependencies, delay, and no possibility to test as you finish. What if Sandy releases her task and a commit is created? She could test, finish, and enjoy her vacation. And here we come to the definition of task-based committing. So task-based committing means when you release a task, a commit is created. Now, how to enable task-based committing? The answer is by creating, by enabling a body. And how to do, to do this, we will show the steps here. First step is you need to go to transaction SE18. Second step is in the body section to search for CTS request check. Third step is to create an implementation for body. Fourth step is to define an implementing class. And the last step is to implement method check before release. Now, in the implementation of check before release, we can customize it based on our scenarios, based on our use case. For example, we can decide when a task will be a commit for which cases. Like you can specify some user for these particular users when they release a task that would be a commit. Or maybe you can say for some package names. For these specific package names, I want the task to be a commit. 
Or maybe you want to know whether these objects exist into the cloned repository. Or you do not want any condition, you want simply for every case uh, the task to be a commit. But besides this, you also can uh, enable one of the following modes, synchronous commit and asynchronous commit. Now let's define what they mean. Asynchronous commit it is performed by a background job, CTS above VCS import observer. The import observer is run by the user who enabled GCTS in the beginning. It is recommended to change this user to a technical user, but this is not a must. A must. But what is mandatory is that this user needs to be a collaborator into the remote repository, so this user can uh, push and pull to the remote repository. And when you should use it, it is mostly suitable for the use cases when your transport requests have a lot of objects, large number of objects. How to use it? You simply need to use method push objects from transfacade. Synchronous commit is performed by the user who is logged in into the ABAP system. It checks the user base authentication related to your remote repository. So this is the difference between the uh, previous commit. It's suitable for use cases when security is highly important, which I believe for the most cases it is important. Uh, and of course, um, when your transport request does not have a lot of objects. How to use it? Simply call method commit repository from repo facade. All right, now let's move to the demo part. Now for this demo, I am logged in into the development system and I will go to transaction SC18. So type SC18. And here I will select body name. And here write CTS request check. Press display. And then you need to go to interface tab. And then here, implementation and create. Now here we need to provide a name of uh, implement, implementing class. So I will put this one, ZGCTS request check, save. Now here uh, we can write a short description, like for example, test body. This is the name of the implementing class. Uh, we can change it, but in my case, I will leave it as it is. The implementation type should be ABAP code. And now we click on the name of the implementing class. Do you want to save? Yes, we want to save the changes. Now, in this case, we have two options. So either uh, we can provide a package name or we can save it as a local object. But in my case, because I'm not interested to transport this body to other systems, then I will just save it as a local object. Perfect. And as we also mentioned in the slides, the method that we are interested in is uh, check before release. So this one. And now here we go to source code based. Click on that. And this is the part where we need to implement our method check before release. Uh, the code sample, you will find that in a blog post, the link to which you will find it into the additional materials of this course. So here we are not going to go into the details about that, but mainly these are the steps that you need to follow to create the body. Now let's move back to the slides again. All right, let's make a summary of what we have learned today. What you should remember from this unit. Yes, you can create commits when releasing a task if you implement a body. How to implement a body? We already showed the steps. Now we are at the end of this unit, so thank you for listening. Please follow the next unit, Commit When Releasing a Task, with my colleague Karin Spieker. Thanks and bye.
Hello and welcome to this open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with CCTS in SAP S4 HANA. Week 4, you need to commit when releasing a task. So in the previous unit, you've seen what task-based committing means and how you can reach it. In this unit, we are now going to see how this looks like in action, how you can do a task-based committing. The important thing is that task-based committing has been switched on for your user. First, for sure, the prerequisite is that the body is implemented that you've heard about in the previous unit. In addition, for this course, we implemented a special view where you can switch on task-based committing for your user. I'm not going to show this in this demo, as this is not part of the standard delivery. You can find the instructions on how to switch on task-based committing for your user in the additional material where you can always find the detailed explanations how to do the exercises. Okay, so for our unit, we are again going to use our dev test landscape for developing and then committing and so on. So the first thing is that we have to switch on task-based committing. For my demo, this has already been done for my user. So as I said, please check the additional material where the exercise is described to learn how to do this. So after that, I'm going to change an object and we will see that when changing the object and releasing the task, this is the only thing that I still need to do to get a new commit. So we will check our new commits in the GCTS app and we will see that only after releasing the task, a new commit is already available. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I've already prepared a small program, which doesn't contain a lot. It's just a demo task program. So let's maybe add a short comment, try a task, and let's say that's it what we need to do for programming right now. So activate as always, and let's for sure create a new transport request, as there was none open, so we now have to create a new one. But that, if you try to work with task-based committing, is only needed to be done once. After that, the object is locked in this respective transport request, and you can use the same transport request always when you need to change something, and you don't have to create a new one, a new transport request anytime. Only the task will be created for sure automatically when you change it the same program again. Okay, so now we have our transport request for this program. So it's now here in our modifiable transport requests. And this time we are just going to release the task. Okay, so the release is now started. Task is ready. Okay. So let's go back into our GCTS app and check what has happened. So refresh the commits list and we can see our new try a task transport or better task is now represented by a new commit in our commits list. So that's how the task-based committing works. Have fun trying it out and that's already it for this demo and for this unit. What you should remember, what you should learn out of it is the task-based committing, as you've also seen in the previous unit, has to be implemented in your system. Releasing a task will, after this has been implemented, result in creating a commit. So it depends for sure on the criteria, as you've learned before in the body implementation, when this is done. But for our user, this was now the case. We have released a task and a new commit was created. Thank you very much for listening. Hope to see you again in the next unit. Bye. Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course Development Operations for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4 HANA. My name is Ulrich Auer. I'm the product owner of the development team, Git enabled change control. And in this role, I'm responsible for the Git enabled change and transport system, the GCTS. We are in week four, where we see how GCTS can be tailored to serve our needs. And this is unit three, where we introduce the GCTS registry.
Ace of S4 HANA release 2021, we offer a so-called GCTS registry. This is a central server service, so it runs on one system. Its purpose is to assign packages, objects and table entries to Git repositories. The GCTS registry holds the information which package, object or table entry is assigned to which Git repository. With the help of the GCTS registry, you can store the stuff that you develop in various repositories, ensuring that for each object it is well defined where it is stored. In the past, this could already be ensured as well by leveraging the transport layer concept, but this worked only for development objects. So these are objects with have, which have a package assignment in the object catalog, TRDIA. Now it works even for customizing entities, and I will explain this in more detail on the next slide. As the GCTS registry is a central service, it must run on an ABAP system, which is stable. Of course, the registration of new entities can be done from any development system. To make use of the GCTS registry, it will be necessary to implement a business add-in a body in SAP speech, for which we will publish a template on blogs.sap.com. By the way, the GCTS registry is an, is an option. Of course, we still support setups in the classic way with transport layers. As mentioned before, customizing entries usually have no catalog entry assigned. So usually when transport requests are released, the target system is determined according to the standard transport layer. This allows you to work with exactly one repository for customizing. If you want to differentiate, you use the GCTS registry so that during transport release, it can be automatically determined to which repository the customizing entities must be committed. To get started, we recommend to start with one repository. You may later use more. We are currently working on the feature so that we can support object moves between repositories as well. That will allow also customizing data moves between repositories. Sometimes we are asked how many repositories we recommend. The general principle is you store together what belongs together. From this principle, you may derive the following recommendations. If customizing depends on coding or an application, for example, templates, use the same repository for both. If customizing is client dependent, use one repository with one branch per client. So you commit from different clients to different branches of the same repository. If customizing is client independent and not part of an application, you may use a separate repository for that so that you can also pull applications and customizing independent from each other. If customizing depends on releases, Use one repository with one branch per release and one branch per client per release. When you work with several branches, you should care about the branch names. Choose names that help you to identify the purpose of each branch. So name the client specific branches after clients and the release specific branches according to the releases. At last, one remark. Application data is not customizing and should not be stored in Git repositories. In the following demo, I want to show you how the GCTS registry is set up. If you use the GCTS registry, you have to connect each ABAP system to the GCTS registry. So this must be done once in each connected ABAP system. And you have to register each Git repository once in this registry. This can be done from one of the ABAP systems that are connected. Let me now show you how the GCTS registry is set up. 
It is documented in the SAP help portal, help.sap.com, where you find the chapter, configure the GCTS registry. There is one prerequisite you have to define one system where you want to run this central service. And on that system, you need a technical user with certain permissions that must be created on that system. And then the procedure is mainly two steps. You have to create an HTTP connection to that central service in each system that shall be connected to the GCTS registry. And you have to define a certain um, configuration parameter in the GCTS app. I show you that in detail. First, have, let's have a look at the HTTP connection that must be created on the other system. For defining HTTP connections, we use the transaction SM59. This is system TST, which shall be connected to the GCTS registry that runs on system DEV. We choose the HTTP connections to the external server. And here we already created a connection. We called it GCTS underscore registry. Let's keep this name in mind. And this is what needs to be configured. So it's the host name of the system where the GCTS registry runs on. In this case, it's the dev server. Very important, you need the correct path. It's exactly this. You can take it by copy and paste from the documentation. And you have to specify the port here, which is the port uh, as you activated that service in the central system, the GCTS related service. You have to define with which user you want to communicate. You have to store the password here, and this must be done with basic authentication. And finally, you have to activate the SSL protocol so that this is used when communicating. So that's all. Of course, when being ready, you check whether this connection is working. Next step is to start the GCTS app and to define a certain system parameter here. We are here on the start screen of the GCTS app showing system TST and its details and all the repositories that are configured already in the system. And we now go to the configurations tab and we add a certain configuration parameter here. We can just search Okay, we just type some, a few letters and we get the suggestion VCS registry destination. This is exactly what we need. And now we have to remember the name of the connection of the destination that we have to enter. It was GCTS registry in our case. Don't know whether it's necessary to be case sensitive here. And as soon as you specify this entry, you see that there is another tab here with a registry. And you see in the registry that is created on system DEV, you see already some repositories assigned to that GCTS registry. How to do that? This is 
demonstrated in the next section, in the next unit, in the next demo. There is one thing that I want to remember uh, to mention here. This is the This is sufficient to assign objects, table entries, and packages to Git repositories. However, we need some more functionality to connect the transport organizer to the GCTS registry. This is explained in detail later in unit five of this week. So this is what you shall keep in mind. The GCTS registry helps you to work with various repositories, ensuring that each object is assigned to not more than one repository. It's all, it also allows you to work with a simple TMS configuration because you will no longer need to maintain transport layers and transport routes and several target systems for each connected repository. You can just use one dummy virtual SID for all the repositories. Now we are at the end of the unit. Of course, you find specific documentation about the GCTS registry in the SAP help portal, and it's defined and described very detailed how to configure and how to use it. Thank you very much for listening. I will directly hand over to the next unit where we will see how the GCTS registry is populated. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Hello and welcome to this open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4 HANA, week 4, unit 4, add your objects to the registry. My name is Karin Spiegel and I'm a product manager. So in this unit, we are going to use what you've learned in the previous units. So you know what the registry is and now we're going to add our repository to the registry and see how we can add single objects to this list of registered objects. So again, we are going to use our development system. In our case, the registry is also hosted on this development system. So we will register our repository and we will register some objects. So to do so, we will go again to our GCTS app. In here, you can see that a new tab has appeared, the registry tab. The important thing for that is that the parameter registry destination is maintained. So that's what you've learned before. And now when we see the list of our repositories, we will go to one of them. We will use the registry in this exercise and in the next one for our customizing. So let's register our repository. This is done in the repository itself. So also in here, you can find a new tab, which is named registry. So let's go there. You can see that the repository is not yet registered. So that's the very first thing that we need to do. We will choose the type distributed development. Don't care for the other ones. This is the important one that you should always choose for now. So you can see we don't have any registered objects, but this list has already been changed a bit. So it's not said anymore that the repository is not registered. Okay, so to define what we need to register, we will go to our previous commits. So what we are going to register is the company that we created before. An easy thing to register something is to just use a transport request. So let's use copy the number of the transport request that was used when we created our company. So in my case, the company is named 2DE and that's now what I'm going to use. So back to the registry tab. Okay, so in here, as the object, we're going to enter our transport request, which is then also suggested. And it acknowledges that this is a transport request. So let's register it. And the result is now that we can see a VDAT object, which is our table that contains the 
companies that we created. Okay, so with this, we are done. We've registered our repository and we've registered our objects by the help of this transport request. I hope that you got the points and now it's up to you to try out to register your customizing repository and also register your objects. What you should remember is that one system has to serve as the registry server. So in our case, it's the development, the DEV system. It can be another one. It should always be a stable one, as you've learned in the previous units. Objects that are to be used in the registry can then be registered from any system that is connected to this central registry system. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Hope to see you in the next units. Bye. Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course DevOps for ABBA with GTS in SAP S4 HANA. This is week number four, unit number five, integration of GTS into the ABBA workbench. My name is Martin Brady and I'm a development architect at SAP. Today we will talk about how GTS could be integrated into the ABBA workbench. And this is most probably the most important thing because this is the place where you want to integrate GTS in order to support your business processes. And in the raw picture, we have to um, uh, analyze four different sections. So this would mean we will start with the general functions. So as a beginning, we want to have an understanding what are the requirements for our integration. So if we really want to use SEAT, if we want to use ADT, and of course also how the transport handling could be done. And uh, most importantly, when we do our transport handling, then it's also important how the repository should be handled inside of our workbench. And of course, how the content could be analyzed in order to um, decide where the changes should be committed. And based on that, we also need a lot of different preparations um, so that we can easily integrate GTS so the first thing what you have to consider, you should prepare your body implementations. So um, take care of the um, SE18 and also which body endpoint could be used in order to change the process in the WBO. So this means SE01 and SE09. Also take care about your objects, what you want to use there, which objects are important for your application and which should be stored in a Git repository and also which repositories are needed. Do you need just one single repository or do you want to have multiple repositories for each application which you run in your landscape? And also check about the facets and the REST API which comes along with GTS and which could be easily consumed in a complete CI, soft, um, CI process. If you have the party applications in your landscape, then also consider them as um, a part of your repository or in a separate repository because somewhere you also want to use this and third party applications in your production system as well. And for the development, it's really important to know, okay, um, if we really want to start with GTS, then maybe it's, um, uh, yeah, uh, it should be used in that way that whenever um, a task is released, then you should also do a commit. In the past, it wasn't that way. Whenever you have released uh, a transport request, then this also meant that um, your changes will be uh, delivered to your complete landscape. But in the meaning of GTS, it's probably more the recommended way that you will do your commits on a task-based level. And if you try to release your transport request, then this could also mean that this is probably the starting of the pull request. And yeah, think about if you want to uh, um, do the sync or the asynchronous option. So this means um, you can easily synchronize um, or synchronously commit your changes to a Git repository or do it asynchronously. It depends on the amount of objects which you want to commit and how much time it should take in that case. And you can also do the user permissions check very early. So this means um, the user permissions check in the app system itself and also in the remote repository, whether the user has the permission to change something in the remote repository. And of course, this also means you can do the authentication check because if, it, if you really want to push changes, then of course also the user should have a developer token or a basic authentication, which is stored in the ABAP system in the credential storage. And for that reason, it's probably also a good idea to check that early before the um, release of the transport request is done. 
And of course, the target repository calculation should be also done in that situation because um, if you have multiple repositories and you do not want to create for every single repository a new virtual SIT, then probably you can also use it with one single virtual SIT. And in that case, you should calculate the target repository based on the objects which belong to the transport request. And then it could be also quite easy to understand what is probably the target repository and where you push to um, go to. And if something went wrong, it could be the case, but um, uh, in that case, you should of course um, have a yeah, proper exception handling. So this means also the yeah, result message from GTS should be visualized to the developer, because I guess in the, yeah, uh, in the normal Git world, it's a common way that could be the case that you cannot push your changes because maybe the latest changes from the remote repository were not pulled to your repository or to your local repository in that situation, it's probably a good idea to have also the same behavior in the upper workbench in that case. And in the end, it's probably also very important to test all of your general functions because you do not want to run, that, um, run them immediately on the production landscape um, because of the reason that it could be the case that something went wrong. So maybe in the body or maybe also in the CI handling. And for that reason, carefully test your SE01, SE09, carefully test also the ADT and the SEAT process and also try out um, the customizing transaction like SPRO, whether everything is working there as well. And that also the transport selection and of course the commit into the repository is working fine in that situation. And of course, um, you should also check the user permissions. So this means not every developer has the same permissions. And in that case, you should also uh, test them and you should do a have or you should have some test rounds where different developers are involved and where you can see whether everything is working. So the next case, if you really want to have an advanced evaluation during your release process, this could mean that you can also um, do a very advanced checks there. And yeah, there are probably um, also four um, great sections which you can evaluate before a commit is done. And this would also mean here in that case, try to evaluate GTS because it could be the case that GTS is not completely prepared for that system or that something went wrong in the past. And for that reason, it's probably a good idea to um, check the complete setup. So this would mean that you can also consume the health check, which is also provided as a separate rest endpoint and also as an upper facade, which could be easily consumed in a body implementation. So the health check is probably also part of the um, Fiori application. So you can also check the results there. But of course, in an automatic process, it's a good idea to use that in the body as well. Check the permissions, of course. So user permissions, also the um, yeah, system permissions. So has the current system, the permissions to write in the um, ABAP system and also in the file system, because um, you know that GCS use um, a local repository on the file system. So this means the SID ADM user needs also permission to write into the directory. And of course, in the end, also check about the connectivity, because if you have, for example, HTTPS based communication, then it's very important that the SSL certificates are valid and that they can be used. Otherwise, you would also have an issue there. If you think about the repository, consider that you should check the repository as well, because um, uh, when you want to push something, then of course the latest commit from the remote repository should be pulled on the local repository. Otherwise, you could also have a, a failure there. So this means this is also pretty easy to test it early before um, the commit is completely done. Also check about the conflicts. Um, uh, it could be the case that some conflicts are still existing on the local repository. They absolutely need to be resolved before you can do some changes. And of course, in the end, you can also check the Git status. So this is probably the technical Git status, which, came, uh, which comes out of the operating system. And you can also check that whether yeah, something went wrong there or that there is something um, strange in the Git configuration or whatever. So there are a lot of different things which could be evaluated there as well. And of course, if you think about advanced um, WBO, so this means SE01, SE09, you can also consider to have advanced unit tests there. So that this um, means that before you can release your commit or your uh, transport request, you can also um, evaluate this unit test, your integration test, your ATC checks, 
whatever you have there could be tested already then. And this would mean if this already fails in the development system, then there's no reason to commit that to the remote repository because you already know it that it doesn't work in the development system. And this would mean, yeah, syntax could be also checked, unit tests could be checked, and all of the other things as well. And regarding the STMS, um, of course, you know that we have a hybrid landscape, or um, GTS can support a hybrid landscape. So this could also mean that you have old the old CTS landscape um, uh, beside GTS. In that situation, it's probably also to recommend it that you should evaluate whether the STMS is working, that the STMS landscape looks right. So this means if you have your non-ABAP system, that um, your repository is connected to the non-ABAP system by using the virtual SIT, and that the current transport request, which is tried to release, has as a transport target the right um, virtual SIT in it. Otherwise, you should think about, okay, maybe it's something went wrong here, and you should stop the um, release of the transport request because you cannot um, release it or you should not release it when you can already know by using the STMS configuration that it will never be committed to a repository because the raw communication is not available. And you can also check for the object assignments and um, whether there are already some logs and other transport requests and also um, that there are other open transport requests which should be released before your current transport request. And these are the evaluation steps which could be easily done before um, a raw commit is executed. Yeah, if you think about the branches, it's also um, pretty simple here because um, you would need a, yeah, a very good control um, about your branches because of course it could be manually selected by the um, developer itself or by the customizer itself, but it's probably not too recommended because it could be the case that the um, uh, customizer has no idea about the repositories and for that reason uh, you need um, a good control about your branches. So this means in the first um, situation you need a toggle where you can enable the branch support or not. And also how the repository should look like because if you have a really smart body implementation here then for example if you have released branches this could be automatically discovered and then the um, GCTS and the body will understand together what is the target um, release and the target branch for that um, current change because it could be the case that you have a five tier landscape that you are currently working in the maintenance landscape and then you also yeah, absolutely do not want to commit something into the feature branches because it does not make sense here in that situation. And for that reason, it could be also yeah, done automatically by using the body and also how the branch naming should look like could be also handled very easily here because if you have a, a very good terminology for your release branches like release minus whatever, then probably it could be also um, understandable by the body um, where or what is the target branch for your current commit. Yeah, and of course also the re reference branch is also important here. So if you have a new system or also a development system which has um, uh, yeah, some uh, new changes in it, then probably somewhere you want to integrate your changes into the next branch or in the reference branch and then probably the refer reference branch is really important here because it's not um, absolutely or not in every case the main branch because it could be also the release branch that you had a hotfix and now the important question uh, um, okay this hotfix where it should go to and this is probably something which could be also easily handled by a good terminology and by a logic in the body implementation. And after that, you should also carefully think about the target selection. So which repository should be used, which branch should be used, um, uh, what is the object relation. So if you have dependencies, need them, uh, yeah, do, do you need to uh, um, uh, deploy and commit them um, in, together with each other into one single repository or into one branch? What is the transport type in your current um, uh, repository and uh, in your um, current transport request? because this could be also mean that you can already distinguish here between customizing and workbench objects. So if you have a type or as a type of customizing, then probably uh, yeah, you should just use a transport request which has also as a type the customizing part. And also you can consider to check attributes if you have um, yeah, some advanced processes in your landscape, then you can also keep some information there in the attribute section of a transport request because this could also help during the deployment into the production system in order to know, okay, uh, do I have dependencies or is this probably a prerequisite 
or do we just deploy the changes into a system which has um, a very special SAP release or whatever. So you have a very lot of uh, things which could be uh, imagined here and what you can also check in that situation. And also if you want to have a proper release management, as I already mentioned, you should think about the naming convention and the terminology. So how um, your release branches should be named. Do you have dependencies between your branches? Because then it would make sense to also keep that in the name of the branch itself. itself. So maybe you have a feature, you need a hotfix, and then probably a hotfix refers to a feature. Then maybe you can also combine the feature and the hotfix name in a, into one single branch name. And of course, about the source information. So this is probably also a good idea to store that in the branch name or in the releases itself so that you can easily see in the remote repository um, uh, whether this branch is um, uh, related to a feature or to a, um, a release or to a hotfix or whatever. So try to keep the source information also inside of your branch. And this also does not mean um, uh, just only in the branch name. It could be also part of the property file of the GCDS um, uh, section. So this means um, uh, there is probably um, a special section in the Fiori application where you can also maintain information like dependencies, prerequisites, and this is also probably a very good place where you can uh, um, define that this uh, branch is related to a, a certain release. And in the end, um, of course, sometimes it comes to the, to the fact that you also have to uh, implement some nodes into your ABAP system because other applications need to be fixed as well. And in the most of cases, this is um, SAP software. And in that situation, it's probably also a good idea to have a separate repository or a separate branch um, for the SAP nodes which, where you can implement them. And in that situation, it's also very important to uh, separate the um, software component versions from each other. Because if you have one single SAP repository and you have multiple branches there, then this could mean that you have, for example, one branch for um, SAP S4HANA 2020 and another branch for SAP S4HANA 2021. Because not every node is also needed in higher releases or in lower releases. And for that reason, you can also easily use the branch um, support and the branch handling already inside of your body. Um, because in that case, it will make or it's quite easy for the developer to um, distinguish between the branches. Because if you have automatic logic, then it's controlled by the body. Or if you have manual actions, then probably it's really important for the developer to understand what is the right branch for my changes. And also when I have implemented some uh, um, uh, nodes because I'm the administrator, then I also need, know, I need to know how the um, branch looks like and how the repository looks like. And in the end, um, uh, yeah, the last but not least is the point of the customizing. This is also really important here in that situation because the most of the customers um, are doing a lot of customizing in the SAP system because they want to adjust the complete system to their business needs. And for that reason, it's really important to have a part in your body implementation which is able to analyze what is customizing because customizing is not only a taboo object, which is probably a table content, because it could be also the case that it's IMG activities which came out of the SPRO. And for that reason, you need a very good object type decision inside of your body in order to know where the customizing content should be committed. Yeah, and of course, in order to make the complete process much easier, you can use the registry um, because the registry will help you in order to understand that um, a certain customizing object with a certain table content belongs to a certain repository. And this could be easily um, uh, yeah, requested by using the registry because the registry knows, okay, that this customizing object belongs to a certain repository and then you can um, process this information directly in your body logic. And this means you have a very high amount of automatism here by using just the registry because you do not have to do a yeah, heavy and um, painful analyzations directly in your body code. Just use the REST service of the registry and I guess it's quite easy to uh, decide whether this customizing belongs to a certain repository. And of course, if you have conflicts, so this means that um, uh, your customizing content um, overlaps with other transport requests or even with some repairs in the production system, then also here you need a very smart handling of the conflicts in order to know 
whether um, you have the conflict or that the transport request needs to be separated into a single branch in order to have um, afterwards some uh, pull requests where the customizer can decide, okay, customizing content A or customizing content B is the right one, which should be deployed to the production system. And this means also logical objects probably needs to be resolved and uh, should be uh, migrated because the logical objects um, also contain sometimes um, uh, yeah, customizing information. And for that reason, um, yeah, you should also analyze them as well. Yeah, and of course, um, uh, um, I guess in the very beginning, it's hard to decide what are the conflicts and what is the target repository for your customizing. And this means you have an ongoing improvement of your complete process because you can start with one single mono repo, which contains all of your customizing. And after a while, if you recognize that you have a lot of overlapping between uh, your repository and between your pull requests, then you can consider to move out um, a base co customizing like company codes or whatever you can imagine and to separate them into a single repository which could be easily controlled complete, uh, uh, during the complete CI CD process. And just because of the reason that you have small changes there, um, but it could be easily deployed together into one single production system. Yeah, in the end, um, it's also important to know about the dependencies. So this is probably also part of the base customizing. So what is my base customizing? Um, do I have that? Do I have to separate that into a single repository? Do I have also the party applications with, which are probably also um, needed and also which also needs to be deployed to the production system? And this also means this is probably the part of the partner content and also the repositories should be separated from each other. But this does not mean that they should not be deployed to with each other but it just means it makes your complete process much easier if you separate them and if you control them with a body. And if you have a very small body in the end, then probably all of these things which were mentioned here in the slides is probably also handleable by the body itself. And this makes the world for your developers and your customizers quite easy. So now we are end of that unit. Um, thanks for your attention. Um, see you on the next slides and see you also in the next unit. And Hope that you understood a lot of different things here and that um, uh, body implementation for GCTS because this is a very important point to integrate all of your GCTS logics also in ADT and in the SPRO transactions in order to have proper processes. So thank you and see you in the next unit. Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4 HANA, Week 4, Unit 6, Use of the Registry when Developing. So in this last unit of this week, you're going to learn how it feels like when you use the registry during your development. We will use customizing in our example so that you see how the process can be changed when you use GCTS with the registry. So what we're going to do is we will go to our development system. We will change something. Remember, the registry is hosted on the dev system. We have registered our objects. So we're now going to change this object. And then we are doing a release. The task will be released. And you will see that a new commit will be created. The difference will be that the transport request doesn't have any target anymore. Important thing is that the switch to using the registry is done for your user. This is not going to be part of this demo because this is something that we have specially developed for this course. It's not part of the standard and it should not be used in the standard as it is in this course. It's just to make sure that you as different participants can work independently from each other. Okay, so let's look how this feels like. If we go to our GCTS app, for sure, we still have the latest commit, in my case, in the customizing repository. It's the one where I created my company. We have registered that object in two units ahead, where you've seen how you can register that using your transport request. So now we're going to make use of that registration. So let's go for our company. So for my company, in this case, 2DE, that I created in week two. And now, Maybe I discovered that I forgot to enter the number. 
So what is the number in the street where my company is located? So let's say it's number two. In this, that's what I'm going to change. So let's save that change. For sure, I'm still asked for transport request, so I will now create a new one. Let's say it's demo street two, what I changed, but I'm not going to enter a target right now because I registered my object. That should now not be necessary anymore. Okay, so let's save that. That's the new transport request that we are going to use. So now we've changed our company and now for sure we need to release the transport request. So let's check for our modifiable transport requests in the customizing area. So that's the one that I just created. And as I said, the task-based committing is also still switched on for my user. So I just need to release my task. So let's do that. Okay, the task is released. So let's go back to our GCTS app and refresh the commits list. And you can see the new commit has arrived. So I just released the task. That's one implementation part of the body. And I used the registry. So I did not implement any or name any transport target, just transport task itself was released and because the object is registered this commit arrives directly in my repository. Okay so with this we are done for the demo. You can try out for yourself, change your customizing object and find out hopefully that it arrives as a commit in the transport or in the commits list. So what you should remember from this week and from this unit is using the registry when developing requires a body implementation. So this is not part of the standard delivery of SAP. And with this, with this registry, with this registration, the transport layers are no longer needed. So that the registry is where GCTS looks up where a specific object needs to go to. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you next week. Bye.